All right, so now that you've actually created your database, what I'm going to do is show you how to integrate that database into Visual Studio, into your actual project. Um, we're going to cover a lot of the sections in this uh, actual video. So five through eight in um, the focus part of the chapter and also 11.2 in the apply part of the chapter. So we've already created our um, database itself. We have our uh, master data file in the project folder, but Visual Studio doesn't know that it's part of the project automatically, even though we were working with it in the server browser and all that, which is really interesting. But it, it, it still doesn't know that we want to actually include it in the project, which means that we need to tell the application to use it as a data source. We actually have to do that manually once we've gone through the process of creating it. The tool that we'll use is the data source configuration wizard, which actually connects the application to our MDF file that we just created. And it actually lets you specify what data you want to access from the file. So you don't need to access the entirety of a database if that database only has certain tables that you're interested in, or that you maybe you want certain rows from a table or certain uh, fields from a table or something like that, you're actually able to specify that through the wizard. Um, and then it takes all the data that you've specified that you want, and it just makes a copy of that data and stores it in the main memory while the application is running. We call that main memory copy of data that we've retrieved from the database, we call that uh, the data set that we're working with. It's uh, a subset of the entire database, but it's just, you know, it, it is a set of the data from the database that we've pulled into memory and that we're working with. All right, so I'm back in Visual Studio on the uh, same sort of application that I had shown before where I created the um, actual data file in, and you can see that in my uh, server explorer right here. But uh, in order to actually add it in, what I'm going to do is go to view, uh, and then we'll want to go to other windows. Um, da -da -da, there we go. Open up that sub menu right here, and then go to data sources. Oh, I missed it. It's right there. And I'm going to pin that up right here. Uh, so now we have this data sources window right here that we can use to reference all of the data that is, uh, you know, that we will be adding into the project. All right, so now what we can do is click this add new data source link that is um, shows up in the empty data sources box. It also shows up under uh, project with this add new data source area right here. But we click that and uh, this takes us to the data source configuration wizard. Uh, and now what we will do is click database right here if we need to. That's the uh, type of data source that we're working with. Um, we'll go to next, uh, make sure that we've clicked data set, go to next. Uh, right here, this is the choose your data connection. Essentially, it's asking us to connect to a particular um, SQL server. So any of the SQL servers that we actually have in our server explorer over here, which in this case is mycourses.mdf, this is the uh, this allows us to connect to the database that we had just made. Um, so once we actually have selected that, then we will go to next, and we can save that connection right there. Uh, you do want to actually save the connection so that we're able to um, you know, hold on to that. We'll come down here, and this brings us to the place where we can select the database objects. So right here is the place where we can actually um, select the tables and fields and all that that we actually want to include in our data set from the tables. So what we want to do is actually go down to tables right here. I'm, I'm going to expand courses right here just so we could actually see everything that's in there. But um, Really, right now we want everything in courses. So the ID, the code, the title, hours, grade, and all that. So I'll click the checkbox next to courses. But if I wanted to get rid of some of the fields in here, 
I could uncheck some of these and you'll see this not notice that courses is partially selected and tables is partially selected. But right now we want all of it. So that's what we're going to do. But this is where you would actually change what tables you want access to and what um, fields in those tables you want access to. And then you also have to name the data set right here. Um, right now, this data set, this default data set name, my courses data set, is fine. So I will hit finish and it will add the my courses data set to the uh, data sources window, just as it has done right there. All right, so we've actually um, added this data source. So I can open that up and open up the courses table and it shows um, everything right here. Oh, well, we'll get to that in a sec. But this is uh, all of the, you know, the tables and the fields that we have brought in with our data set. So all these are contained just completely within the data set right there. Now I can right click the data set and uh, preview the data. And this gives me the preview data dialog box where I can actually, um, you know, actually go and select a whole bunch of stuff and uh, preview everything right here. Let's see. Whoops. My bad. Uh, so what you would do to preview a table is go under the courses table. You go to this fill comma get data right there and hit preview. And this shows you everything that is inside of your data set, which happens to be everything from the table inside of the database because we brought in everything. If I had deselected ID in the data configuration wizard, then this uh, field wouldn't be there. It would just be code title hours and grade, just like that. So this shows you everything essentially that you have imported as well as this meta metadata, oh, the metadata uh, describing everything in the data set. All right, so now that we actually have added our um, data set in into our project, um, what we have to do is we have to take that data set and bind it to a control on our application in order for us to actually be able to interact with it in the application. Right now, it's just kind of sitting there, not really doing anything. We have to bind it to a control, and then that control will allow us to interact with the data set and then indirectly allow us to interact with the database itself. So binding is essentially just connecting in some object to a control. In our case, we're binding the data set object to a control. The um, connected controls are known as bound controls. There's two methods of binding in Visual Studio. The first is that the computer actually creates the control and then binds the database to that control. And then all you have to do is um, actually you know, just move that control onto your form which is super easy. In the data sources window, you just click the object that you want to bind and then drag that to some empty area on the form. Or you can bind an object to an existing control, which means dragging the object to the control that's already on your form, or it means clicking on the form and using the properties window to bind that object to the uh, control or to the form or something like that. So either you're clicking and dragging or you're using the properties window of a um, control or a form. Those are the two options you have there. And we'll show off how to bind an object to an existing control later on. So when you actually want to um, bind an object or, you know, have the computer create the object for you and just drag it onto the control, uh, you have a few options right here. So inside of data sources, if you click on something that you might want to uh, bring in like a particular field or an entire table, you end up with this uh, little combo box right here that you can use. But on the left side, this little icon actually shows what default control you can have if you just start clicking and dragging something on. Like for example, when I clicked this code field and then dragged it onto the application, um, the icon to the left of code uh, it's a little hard to see, I think, but um, it indicates that it's a text box. And if I uh, drop that onto the form right here, we end up with 
well, a whole bunch of stuff that I'll talk about later, but we get this text box where I can actually set the code for a particular, you know, I can get or set the code for a particular um, record inside of the data set. So that's what we see right here is we have these default controls that we can just select and grab, but then we also have things like if you actually click on the arrow in the combo box that gives you all of these um, options for default controls that you can then use. So for example, I could go to the combo box right here and you know that changes what will happen when I drag code onto the actual application. And what this lets me do is this lets me, um, this automatically creates a combo box for me that allows me to choose all of the different code values inside of, um, inside of the data set that then I would be able to use as part of my calculations or something like that. So that is a, uh, an option that we have right there. All right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a data grid view to the, um, application, which will just allow us to look at a table of all everything in the data set. So I'll click and drag courses, just the courses table from the data sources area onto the actual application itself, just like that. And a uh, couple of things have been placed. There's this uh, courses data grid view um, object right here, but there's also up here a binding navigator, which I'll get into in a little bit. But yeah, that's all you have to do. That's the basic way of adding your data set onto your application like that. So I'm going to hit start. Um, when it's building, it might take a while. So you might have to be patient for a little bit, but uh, I will uh, meet you back when it is done on my end. All right, so when you are first um, building your application after adding in something, some, some control bound to your data set, you might get some kind of error. Uh, if you see build errors, of course, you want to hit no. But then you'll get an uh, error, a whole bunch of error lists right here. Um, let's see. MyCourses.MDF is being used by another process right here, which is bad. So what you have to do right here, let's see, we go to server explorer. Um, you actually want to uh, go to the server explorer and close the connection like so, if that happens. And that should hopefully um, fix that. So I suppose if you're watching this clip right now, it actually did fix it. So we'll see what happens. Oh, it fixed it. That works surprisingly well. Perfect. Uh, the other type of error that you might see is um, if you get some error that says couldn't process main form dot resx due to it, it's being in the internet or restricted zone or having the mark of the web on the file, uh, on the file. And if you see something like that, um, section uh, 11 point, what is this? Section 11.6 has the actual instructions on what to do in order to resolve that error. So that's what I'd recommend looking at if you run into that particular one, if it's talking about mark of the web or something like that. And what I showed you is if you forgot to close the connection in the server browser, which you should do. Um, but yeah, here's the data grid view. Um, that's what this looks like is just a whole table full of stuff. Uh, it kind of looks like looking at an Excel sheet. Um, I can actually modify data in here. Uh, I can scroll through and look at everything. I would have vertical scrolling as well if I wanted to look at that. And of course, we'll be able to make it look prettier if we want to. Um, we can also do things like sort things by the, by the different fields, ascending or descending, by clicking on those field names. Um, ID ascending like this is the fault, of course. Uh, but yeah, that's what that looks like in order, you know, how you can bind the um, actual course to your, uh, or sorry, bind the actual data set to your application. 
Now up here we have this binding navigator control that I mentioned uh, before, where this actually uh, lets you move between the different um, fields, or sorry, the different records of a particular uh, database or a data set, which right now it doesn't do a ton of stuff to help seeing that we can just look at all of the records in this particular data set all at once and just moving through like this is a little bit uh, slower. We can move to the end, which is nice if we have a lot of them in here and move to the beginning. Um, but it'll be more helpful for other ways of displaying data using a, uh, like using different controls to display a data set like this. However, using the navigator control, you can also do things like add a new record, you can delete a record, uh, and you can save any sort of changes that you made in here to the actual, um, you know, to, to the actual database, which we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But you can also, in this view, by the way, you can actually edit things as well. Uh, and you'll get this little edit icon. Uh, well, the changes get lost if you click away from them, but you can actually change values in here and then try to save them. And we'll talk more about making changes and saving in just a moment. So something I want to point out is that when you drag a uh, database control like the uh, data grid view onto your application like this, you're not just adding one control, but multiple. And you can see down here, this component tray that pops up actually when you add your, um, your uh, data grid view control, it's actually going to contain a few things right here. For example, the um, courses binding navigator, which is up here, that's the controls that actually let you navigate the um, data set itself. Uh, this ta table adapter manager, this uh, courses table adapter, courses binding source, and then my courses data set like this. That's all going to get added into the um, component tray alongside data the uh, data grid view control. Um, so this all is uh, really important to note because if, let's say if I just, you know, delete this, I still have all of this information down here, which means, you know, I could actually switch this over to the details view rather than the default, the uh, grid view like this swap in now this this new details view and have all of this kind of stuff show up all of these different text boxes that then get added in and can interface with all of this database information and whatnot but it should still work fine however if i were to delete this all of a sudden these don't really work so well or um if i got rid of all of this stuff right here then all of a sudden my application no longer works with a database. So all of these objects right here, and I'll go into what all these objects do in just a second, but all of these objects are really important. By the way, really quick, this is what this uh, details view actually looks like when I dragged it, when I dragged that on before onto the application. Uh, and this is actually why the navigator is so helpful. This details just shows me everything from one of the records in the data set, but I can I uh, navigate using these arrows to go through the different records like this uh, and then make the changes, um, delete rows, add, add records, save changes, all that kind of stuff. But that's just really quickly what that looks like. All right, so I just want to very quickly go over all of the database objects that we will be kind of handling in our uh, application, especially some of the stuff in the component tray that might not have been so obvious. So. The dataset object, that stores information from the database. That's what we were setting up when we actually, uh, you know, created that new, added that new data source using the configuration wizard and all that. So that dataset object, that pulls information from the database into this data set. And then we are looking at the data set or editing the data set or whatever, when we actually are working with that data inside of the uh, application. So we're not, it's like a um, that that copy in memory that I was talking about. That's what the data set object is. The data grid view displays the data as a table, specifically the data set data as a table. So that's the one that looked a bit like an Excel sheet. Binding Navigator provided all of those controls. You can 
move between records, add or delete records, save changes made to the data set. Now table adapter is more of a uh, internal one. The table adapter actually connects the database to the data set object. So when you start your application, this is what's responsible for taking information from the database and putting it inside of the data set. It also is responsible for inserting records from and deleting records in the actual data set when you're working with it with the, uh, you know, when, when, when you're actually um, messing with it in your application, the data, the table adapter is what uh, handles that insertion and deletion of records. Um, now the table adapter manager, if you make changes in the in the data set, the table adapter manager decides, uh, you know, whether or not those changes are saved into the actual database using that connection, um, using that connection in the table adapter. So the table adapter provides a connection and it will uh, transfer data from the database to the data set. And if any changes are made in the data set, like any um, records are inserted in there or records are deleted from the data set, it will put those changes back into the um, actual data. Like it, it will facilitate those changes being pushed back into the database. But the manager is what's decide like what decides like whether changes into the data set are actually saved to the database. So when those changes are saved and how they are saved, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. And then the binding source um, connects the data set with bound controls. So that is kind of like if the user clicks on a control on the application that is supposed to perform a specific change to the data set, well, that, um, that request for a change is given to the binding source, and then the binding source actually uh, does the translation and then sort of makes the, and then interfaces with the data set in order to provide the result that is needed, whether that's uh, retrieving everything in a particular record so that it can be displayed in all the text boxes for the detail view that I showed off before, or whether that is um, the user typing in a value and then clicking save on the, uh, con on the controls. And then the binding source would then be in charge of taking that new value and sticking it in the data set. Just a very quick diagram to think about it. Uh, the database um, has data and that data is given is loaded into the data set by the table adapter. Uh, and then the data set via the binding source is loaded into the bound controls on the form. When the user makes uh, changes via the data set, you know, the changes they request will be passed using the binding source to the data set. Like the binding source will actually modify the data set here. And then when it's time to actually save changes back to the database, the table adapter manager will um, decide what is getting saved and how it's getting saved using the table adapter to actually get those changes back into the database. Now, when you're actually running your applications that are working with your databases, you have your local database file, which is the database file contained in the project folder. That's the, um, that's the one that you created, that MDF file that you created that ends up in the project folder, in the same folder as your VB and your VB proj files. Um, but when you actually build your application and start running it, your database may or may not be copied to the bin slash debug folder inside of your project folder when the application starts. It's going to depend on the files copy to output directory property. But, um, you may have a database inside of bin slash debug that is different than the than the actual local database file. And based on what happens, the uh, file inside of bin slash debug might have changes that are not reflected in the local database file. Or the they might even get uh, overwritten. So let's talk a little bit more about that. 
So here are the values for the actual copy to output directory property. And this is a property of the um, actual database file, by the way. But uh, there are three property settings right here. Uh, do not copy. So the file in the project folder is not copied to bin slash debug when the application is started. Any changes are that are made to the um, project folder, or sorry, any changes made to the database are just saved to that local copy um, irrevocably. Uh, copy always is the default behavior, which is that you have your database in the local file. Uh, it gets copied over to bin slash debug. When you start the application, you can make changes in there. Um, you can add records, delete records, change values, whatever. Uh, those changes will be saved to the bin slash debug uh, copy. But then the next time you start the application, the original copy in the local file will overwrite any of the changes you made in the bin slash debug version. So that is copy always, uh, the default property value. Uh, and then copy if newer is essentially, um, like it, when you start the application, if there is no copy in bin slash debug, it will make a copy and stick that in there. Uh, but then after that, when you, uh, when you start the application, it will compare the date on the local project file copy. And it will also look at the date on the file in the debug folder. And whichever one is newer, it will put into bin slash debug. So if you made changes in bin slash debug, and then you exited the application, well, those changes are newer than the actual like last modified date on the local file. So when you start up that application, you'll see those changes again. But if you made a change to the basic, like the base local file one, you maybe added the new field or changed the value or whatever, just if you changed anything at all, then that one is suddenly newer. So then that will overwrite whatever you have in bin slash debug. Um, so that is what copy if newer does. So essentially, if you have the last two property settings, the ones that uh, involve copying at all, database changes will always be saved to the bin slash debug copy, not to local. Uh, only do not copy saves the changes to the local copy. If you have copy always, then bin slash debug is always overwritten by local. And if you do uh, copy if newer, then bin, dot, bin slash uh, debug will be overwritten when uh, if the local copy was updated most recently. Otherwise, uh, bin slash debug will not be overwritten and changes will be uh, preserved. So the way you um, actually change that property is you go to mycourses.mdf uh, in your solution explorer right here and you right click and then you go, go to properties and then down in properties, this uh, properties window right here, um, you'll see this copy to output directory value and you can change that to whatever you want. All right, so that data grid view object that I showed off earlier actually has some really nice properties if you want to um, make things look a little bit nicer. So for example, choosing the data source, editing what the columns are in the actual data set, uh, adding columns, uh, enabling how the user can interact with this um, you know, data set, whether they can add, edit, delete data, uh, whether they can reorder columns. There's this doc and parent container, which um, Provides the borders of the control to its uh, actual container. Um, this add query thing, you can filter the data as well, which we'll talk about that. And then pre previewing the data, which would allow you to view the data bound to a control. So if we want the um, data grid view to look kind of nice, what we can do is, well, there's a few things. So the first thing I'll do is go to the uh, auto size columns mode property instead of the properties of this thing. Um, here we go. Auto size columns mode is this property. It by default says none. Um, you can change that to all these different values, but fill is usually pretty good right here. Um, let's see.
Once we have that done, now what we can do is actually click the task boss box. So I'll click that arrow up there, go to the um, this uh, task view that I just showed off before. Uh, you know, the, the task list that I showed off before. Oh. It is not working with me right now. Uh, but I can come in here and I can do stuff like um, click dock and parent container, which actually will essentially full size this entire thing so that we can actually see, you know, have the entire application taken up by it. Uh, it would adjust to any other controls that you have going on, of course. And then what you can do is you can also edit some of the different columns. So there's all these different properties here, like um, we go to ID, uh, for example, there's all these different things that we can actually change. Um, let's see, what was it? Ah, so the sort mode, for example, we can come down here, we can make that automatic, which, or, not for ID, uh, let's see. Oh, my bad. Uh, here we go. So I can come in here, I can look at all of these uh, properties alphabetically. Uh, there we go. For the ID, we don't want to actually let users mess with it, right? So we want to go to read-only, make sure that this is true, which it is. Um, for code, we can go to auto size mode. Uh, auto size mode essentially when we have like an auto size thing enabled, which is what we did with the all columns thing, uh, we, this helps determine like how this should be set, you know, how, how the column should actually be sized. What we'll do is click um, all cells, which essentially says, hey, the uh, size of the column should be determined by all of the cells in here. So the largest cell out of everything in the column, that's what auto size mode should be set to so that none of the text is ever cut off. Um, we'll do the same with title as well. Oh, there we go. With title as well, we'll go to all cells. So we have all of that. Um, ours here, we'll go to default set style. These are just examples of things you can do to make the data view look a lot nicer, by the way. Um, inside of this uh, default cell style, by the way, we have all of these pieces of information about how we can set the individual cell, each cell being an intersection of a record in a column. So for the hours cells, this is how the hours are actually you know, formatted and how they look when you actually look at them, all that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, so for alignment, uh, we'll go to middle center so that it is completely centered, um, with grade right here, for default cell style for grade, I'll click those ellipses, make that middle center as well. And then that's good for the columns. Those are just things you can do to make things look a little bit nice. Um, so let's see what the application looks like when we actually, you know, with these changes that we've made. So this is what the application looks like. Now we have all of these centered uh, values right here in hours and grade. Everything is um, very nicely spaced, which is great. Uh, not, none of the uh, text is cut off or anything like that, but you know, you can actually see all of the values here, which is really nice. And yeah, that's the result of that. Now, like I mentioned before, you can also um, put, uh, you can bind your data set to existing controls already on your application. So this is an application that uh, displays the course code for our particular student, as well as the grade that they received. So what I can do is I can drag the code field right here onto our course code uh, label, and that'll be connected already. Um, and as you can see, doing that added this data set 
the courses binding source, the courses table adapter, and the table adapter manager, but it didn't add the actual navigator object. We'll have to do that on our own. But before I do that, I will put the grade onto grade right here. And now this um, is actually bound to the course code and this is bound to the grade. This is what happens if you run it with without the binding navigator, by the way. Um, it displays the first record, you know, the course code and the grade from the first record, but it doesn't allow me to look at any of the others. So I actually have to add that manually. So what I have to do in order to add that binding navigator is I can just um, search for it, binding navigator. It's also underneath um, data. I, let's see, comma controls, toolbars. Come down to data, you have binding navigator right here. Um, I'll just drag that right underneath the title and you'll see that whole menu come up. Um, the one that we had seen before. Now for this particular um, example, we're just displaying these values through labels, right? We're not actually doing anything with it. So we're not editing or we're not adding new records. We wouldn't have a way of doing that with this particular application anyway. So we should get rid of some of those uh, unnecessary controls. But, um, oh, before we do that, actually, what you have to do is in binding navigator one, you have to go to the binding source property right here. Right now, um, this is just set to none because it's not actually connected to anything. Like it's down here in, um, along with the other, uh, it's down here along with everything else, but it's not actually connected to the data set or anything like that. So we actually have to connect it specifically to courses binding source. So binding navigator connects to courses binding source, which then uh, is able to translate the navigator stuff to this uh, binding source right here, which is really important. We, we need that to happen. All right, so now I'm going to uh, remove those delete and add new buttons from the control. So I'll just right click these, get rid of that, right click, get rid of that, and um, that's all gone. So we are good to actually just start the application again. And once that builds, there we go. Now we have control over everything here, which is really nice. So that's how you would do that manually. That's how you would set up the, um, like you can set up the layout like this of the application, drag things in, add the binding navigator, make sure you set the uh, binding source uh, property to the correct courses binding source object or whatever your binding source would be named for your um, table. And then edit the binding navigator as need be. All right, well, that is uh, how you go about integrating a database into your actual code. Um, that's, the, that's the whole process so that you can actually start interacting with things in the debate database. So now that we have all that information, we can actually start using databases in order to do cool things with the data.